When I meet people, I can easily recognize which of the four categories they are. So the big question is, what are the top agents doing to absolutely crush it in real estate, grow their teams and add more transactions year over year while so many struggle? If you ever thought about this, you're not alone. No one has been able to get the answers until now. We spent the last few years helping agents sell billions in real estate, rubbing shoulders with top producers, which got us thinking. How can we expose more people to these insights to help raise the standard in the whole real estate industry? We then realized that we could help bridge the gap by getting secrets from the best of the best so that you can succeed. My name is Andrew Dunn. And my name is Peter Michael. Welcome to Elite Agent Secrets. Building and or, you know, trusting a team, right? To yeah. execute against you and, and do a good job and you know uphold your brand name i mean you're a, you're an independent brokerage so it's even more important to you than most you know whether they're at kw or coldwell or exp or whatever it is like if you're 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 you it's like you are directly in the firing line if you've got yeah, a bad agent yeah. yeah i've definitely you know branded my brokerage jamie white real estate you know and like that's that's the sign we put in the ground that's everything is branded with my name so when i bring people in it's really important you know one of the reasons I, I, I like that we're Jamie White Real Estate is that people remember my name and call me back rather than remember Keller Williams, you know, or, you know, because there's such a long period of time between um, real estate transactions. You buy a house and then you sell it five years later and that person has to can easily remember that they were with Keller Williams, but can't, can't quite remember the name of the agent. You know? Right. And then five years later, they just call the Keller Williams, you know, general line or Google and end up with an agent. And so I, I very much um, wanted to make sure, OK, I'm going to take my brokerage, brand it, put my name out there. But with that, obviously, once you're putting your name out there, you've got to entrust other people to, to, to take care of that brand and that name. And so for me, that starts with like just recruiting the right people. I think you never have as much influence as you do at the point that you offer the job. So if you have a choice between five candidates, the most important thing is you try choose the right person for the job. So doing personality tests, extensive interviews, making sure, because once someone comes to work for me, I generally just leave them alone to do the job. I give them guidance, I give them training, and then I leave them alone to get on with it. And so I try to, I you know, I don't, believe that you can change somebody quickly you know you can't have a bit you can influence people and you can lead them over a period of time and they will change but in the short term they come into your to your company and they are who they are and you have to work around that and so at the point that you recruit you have to make sure they're exactly who you want and that's important and so for me it starts with recruitment i recruit the right people qualified eager uh, you know, motivated, high attention to detail if they're an admin, you know, speed to lead is the key thing. You know, I love people with anxiety if they're salespeople, you know, because they're always like, I got to get back to them. So what what personality tests do you get them to do? Do you get them to do like the DISC or Myers-Briggs? Or... Like DISC, yeah. I like DISC because it categorizes into four different categories. And so when I meet people, I can easily recognize which of the four categories they are. Shall we do a quick test? What do you yeah. and Peter are? You've, you've got to be DIs, right? You've got to be high D, high I, because you're, you're entrepreneurs, you're go-getters, and, and you're very sociable. And, <laughs> and maybe you have some C, which is like the, the engineering part of you that likes process and organization. I, to be fair, I just, I, 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 it's a long time since I took the Myers, uh, sorry, the disc, but yeah. I know because uh, I am very, I'm like very, very, very high on the D. Like yeah. it's yeah. basically off the charts type thing. Yeah. But yeah. like on the Myers Briggs, they always come back as, they, they kind of name you, right? And there's different ones. Yeah. And I always come back as the commander. Oh, the commander. Which is like, <laughs> yeah. And it's like, you know, it's kind of it's somewhat funny because people peter's used this word to describe me at times and that you know i think it can come across like that at times but it's like ruthless yeah it's like sometimes it's, it's just and it's not it's like i'm kind of i'm being very fair but it's like it just i don't 
I don't um, hide away from tough choices. I yeah. actually embrace them. Like I go towards them because yeah. I always see hard decisions as the biggest um, net result on the other side. Because like yeah. it's a really hard choice for a reason, right? So I always see them as like, I get through this and like this summit really good on the other side that can come out of this. Because if it was an easy decision, usually there's not much to gain. That's yeah. kind of how I look at things. So like I always move towards tough choices because I, I, I that's where I see biggest growth. Yeah. Right? That's yeah. kind of how I perceive it. But you would, if in real estate, you would need to hire someone who's an SC because yeah. you need somebody to come behind you and right. say, hold on a minute, hold on, let's think this through. And to like, and then also to make sure that you're, you know, crossing the T's and dotting the I's and making 100%. sure that the details are, are followed to keep you compliant, which is, which is, which is why I think the disc is so important. You know, if I hire an admin who I really like, you know, so I go into the meeting and, you know, if I, if I brought you into an interview, I would, me and you would really get on and I would want you to have the job, but right. you would absolutely be the wrong person for my transaction coordinator job. <laughs> and I would absolutely be better off going with the next person who walked in who I didn't quite like as much. And yeah. they were, they, they kind of annoyed me a little bit. You know, like there was something that graded, but like you have to realize that actually what graded is that we're two different personalities. And actually the person that we great, we didn't quite hit it off in the interview is the better person for the job than you would be for the job because we got on so well, we could just run off in the wrong direction right. and six months later realize that we just were not a fit. This is kind of funny you say this because... I think Peter, he's being quiet, but I think in the background he's going, that is exactly what I'm like. Because I'm like, just go and do this. And he's like, you don't understand all these shit little things that I've got to do. And I'm like, just fucking. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so, so the reason why I was quiet is because I was intuitively looking this up because I took, I did take the personality test, but I couldn't remember exactly what I was. So Jamie, you can shine a little bit of light on this, but I am an, I N T J dash A. No, that's my A. That's, that's my Yeah. See, that one, oh. everyone gets like seven different letters and there are like 20 odd combinations you can be. And so it's very hard to know that one by just meeting somebody. So it's yeah. difficult if you go into the interview and you're, you, the thing about DISC is it just gives you four categories. And so once you know that you're a DI and you need to hire an SC, it's very easy to recognize an SC in the interview. Okay, right. so so I have to take the disc because I have no idea yeah. what would be complimentary, but my guess is probably what Andrew's saying is fairly accurate. You're probably you're probably you're probably a high I, which is sociable, which is you know, you're here, you like people, that's what you make you a great salesperson. But what I'm also getting from you is that you're a C. You like process and you like detail. I think that that is probably what you are guessing. Yeah, so so on, on this, it says that my personality is like an architect. Believe it or not, I am more introverted than extroverted. And I'm yeah. very, very logical. Very logical. Yeah. 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 You, you know, you two are a good team. Like you're the ideas guy. I mean, uh, I mean and, and Andrew's definitely Andrew, the idea, yeah, the right, vision. Yeah. And then you implement, you process. Yes, and, yes. Yeah. I'm like, tell me yeah. what I need to do so I don't have to think about it and I'll just get it done and let's let's roll. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. What's the next step? Yeah. What's the next thing we need to do? Yeah. This is, yeah. Um, I mean, this is, this is the thing. This is about, you know, when you do build a team, it is because I've built teams in the past and, I've it's amazing how we with, how we all balance each other out, and there's actually a lot of truth to this. Yeah, it, well, there is because I, like you were saying, Jamie, I've hired uh, someone else who was high up, and they were basically a spitting image of me. Okay, you know, that was like, you know, they they took these tests, so I think we both didn't basically had very similar results and some minor differences, and it it, it became very challenging to work together at the end. Like it didn't work out, obviously, in the end, but. It just, um, it for like a year, 18 months, it kind of, it was all right. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it kind of worked. Yeah. But then as stuff got more stressful and things like, there was a lot of clashing of heads yeah. because we we both then were wanting to go in different directions. But ultimately it's my decision where we go and that's a hard pill for other people who aren't in charge to swallow, right? Yeah. Um, because they think it should be a certain way. But listen, it's my money. 
and it's my reputation on the line, so we do it my way. And listen, the captain goes down with his ship, and if I sink it, I can live with me sinking my ship in a weird way, but I can't live with someone else sinking it off a poor kind of managerial decision from my part. That's how I at least do it. I'm not sure whether that's right or wrong. Yeah. But like, if stuff goes bad, I want it to have been in a my decision. Like, I don't want that to ever fall on someone else's shoulders. Like, you know, all the hard choices should be made by me. It, it depends what level you're managing at, right? Like, are you just, like, I, like, try to give guidance for the ship of the direction we're heading in, you yeah. know, and say, okay, guys, here's what we're going to do this year. Here's how many transactions I want us to get to. Let's talk about how we get there. You know, what, like, what are the new ways we're going to move forward? You know, who, who are we going to make relationships with? But it depends, you know, like you, you, in the example you're giving, it's like how, you know, you, people like to be autonomous, you know, and so, and, and yeah. but, but at the same time, people have to understand that ultimately you're the boss, right? Like, uh, right. You're, ultimately you're the boss, but there's a balance, you know, you've got to find the balance of like, how do I, how do I keep people enjoying working here because they have this autonomy, but at the same time, keep everybody heading in the direction I need them to go in to meet my, what ultimately are your personal goals, you know? hundred percent. Well, this is the thing as well, right? It's, um, it's the fact that I also think the remote work and stuff like that and people uh, through the whole COVID and the, the insecurities around financials and all this stuff has compounded the fact that, People now are kind of like, do I want to do this? And I feel like there's a lot more jumping about going on. And yeah. I think, you know, people who are employing feel a lot about like this. It's hard to find people for a start. And then you do find people and then it's, okay, how do I then keep them, um, you know, keep them on board for the long run? Um, so, yeah, I mean, like, when just on this last topic before we kind of wrap up here but it's like where do you find good agents and what has your like success rate been let's say are you just really so good at the recruiting and the that side of things that your success rate is very high um or is it you know vice versa and you have had some foibles let's say yeah no no i'm not i've like had agents come and go all the time like people join the team and they don't work out, you know, some of the skill of it is that people join the team. And if they're not working out, you've got to quickly let them go, you know, because like you said, like I said earlier, you're protecting the brand, you know, you, you definitely, I would say, half of the agents that we've ever bought in, we've let them go, because we've suddenly realized that, you know, they are not as motivated as we thought, or they're not a good fit for our team here. They've upset somebody that, you know, it, it, it's delicate. You know, when we get, when we fluctuate between like, you know, six and 10 people, and when we get closer to 10 people, sometimes, you know, like trying to get everybody to get along and to, you know, keep harmony can be difficult, you know, and it, it's, it, it, it definitely is, you know, you've got to be slow to hire and quick to fire sometimes because, you know, if somebody comes in and they're like, they've reached the point where they're not working for the team and trying to advance every day, you've got to recognize that quickly and just say, you know, take them into a room and, you know, thankfully in Virginia, we can just say, hey, look, I'm sorry, this isn't working out for me. Um, have a nice day. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and so, um, yeah, it's it, in no way, you know, you have to take risk, you know, um, and part of that risk is, is letting people come in and, and, and work for you and, and, and knowing that they may not stay. Well, yeah, fair enough. I think this is um this has been super insightful. I've actually really enjoyed it. I think you you are potentially our first guest that's actually made notes and you're like, I want to cover all these points. So you get that trophy. <laughs> you get you're the m most prepared with regards. You knew exactly what you want to speak about. And, it's been and that also kind of shows with how you run your business too, right? Yeah. You're very, you're very prepared, very systematic. You kind of carry that through everything that you do. So it's how you do one thing is how you do everything. And we can see that. So yeah, we appreciate absolutely. it. So the floor is now yours, Jamie. If people either, I don't know, want to join your team, if you've got some stuff going on, they can reach out for some advice, tips. Like how can they get in touch with you? Tell people what you got going on. 
Maybe yeah. you want to sell a home in Virginia. I'll buy one. <laughs> yeah, we, we will take all of those things. We are obviously looking for employees for next year. I definitely am looking for admin employees. So if you would join, like to join our team as an admin, um, we definitely need a, um, at least one, maybe two new admin people for next year to reach our goals. And yeah, like I'm here, I'm in Charlottesville, Virginia. I'm always looking to help anybody purchase or sell a home. So yeah, give me a call. Look me up. What's uh, what's the best way they can reach out? Number, phone number, email, tell them. Um, you can email us. We are info, I-N-F-O, at jzwre.com. Or, um, yeah, you can, my, I'll give you, I, I don't know our office number and I don't want to give out my cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Everyone, yeah. if you want to reach out, you want to sell a home, buy a home, you want to become an admin assistant on a rock star team, help Jamie reach the half a billion dollars in sales that is next yep. goal. I think you'd be uh, on the fast track to learn how to become a fucking boss, real estate agent, broker, admin assistant. So Jamie, it's been awesome to have you on. Thank you for sharing your secrets to your success. And we look forward to having you back on next year when you hit your half a billion dollar goal. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I'll be back. I look forward yeah. to it. Be back and you can tell us what happened then. Perfect. Jamie, thanks for coming on. Everyone, we really hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for listening and we'll see you in the next one. Hey, thanks for listening to this episode. Now, before you go, we're giving access to a private training we did where we revealed the top three niches to get listings today completely for free. So if you want access, you can go and download that training at EliteAgentSecrets.com. We're regularly releasing new trainings, guides, and cheat sheets. So make sure to head over to EliteAgentSecrets.com and sign up so you don't miss out.